Hello Rutbags, it's Jade. Welcome to Fade to Silence, a quick tips video for you to get started in this fantastically unique survival game. This game has really grabbed my attention. It's got lots of systems in it that I think are really great, really fresh, or they just work a lot better in this game than I've seen them in others. It is a hard survival game, no doubt about it. It's gonna be for people that really enjoy the grind and really enjoy survival aspects. So let me run you through some tips to get you going. Don't forget to like the video if you find it enjoyable and for the best in all survival game news, make sure you've got notifications on my channel on and let's crack on. There is a little tutorial in the game. I strongly recommend you go through it. You can also check for survival tips, which basically we go over all the stuff that you're learning as you find it. But there are some things that just aren't explained very well. You can see in the top left side, that bar, the white bar, it's got a kind of blue icicle on the halfway mark. Now clearly it's your health bar, but you'll realize that your health won't replenish all the way filled while it's got that highest bar on it. This accumulates basically when you get too close to corruption. When you're cleansing certain spots on the map, which you have to do to progress, you will find it takes away a little bit more of your health. The only way to get rid of this is by sleeping and resting. Now you only gain a tiny fraction of your health while doing this, but if you take healing potions that replenish your health over time, you can increase the rate that you do this. Later on in the game, you will access certain magic materials that can also cleanse the icing off your health bar. And if you die and you respawn, that is also a way that it cleanses, but obviously it does reduce your flames of hope. Now this is a roguelike game. When you lose all your flames of hope, that is it. You have to start over again. You can get access to more Flames of Hope as you play the game, you'll be able to craft some and take them. But if you do lose them all, that is it, you will start once more. As you go through, you can also gain permanent unlocks to make things a little bit easier. These are under the Boons tab in the menu system. If that sounds a little bit too hardcore, there is in fact two game modes to try. Survival, which I'm doing right now, and Exploration Mode. Exploration Mode has unlimited lives, where the survival does rely on you getting more Flames of Hope as you progress. So basically, you have to judge whether or not it's worth going out to get more resources and risking killing yourself. There are many ways to die in this game, whether it's malnutrition, the weather, or the horrible monsters lurking around. There's so many ways for you to die. Being prepared for each adventure, each expedition is really important and so making sure you've got the right tools and armour is really, really important. First of all, you need to go and gather as many grub roots as possible. These are really, really valuable. Pressing and holding RT or R2 will bring up your focus meter, basically highlighting resources and enemies all around you. Really go for the grub roots early on. These are what you need to make fibre and this is how you're going to improve your armour and give you more encumbrance or carry weight. There's a number of herbs and things that you can craft, but it's the grub roots you really want. They kind of look like fat little sort of tendrilled slugs. You can make food out of the grub roots too, but I really strongly suggest you don't. Make sure you just get raw meat by shooting at deers and keep the grub roots for making fiber. Not only do you need the fiber for your armors, you're also gonna need it to craft different weapons like the knife, the bow, the ax, and the pickaxe. To help you carry more make two pouches, you're gonna need six fibers for these each time. It might not seem a lot, but it gives you two extra slots for each pouch and you can have two pouches equipped. Later on, you will be able to upgrade your backpack. This will also give you substantial extra space and room. Next up on your hit list is to keep yourself more warm. You're gonna need the fur lining. You can get this by getting 12 fiber and you're gonna need also three pristine meat pieces. Generally, each kill of a deer will give you at least one pristine meat, but you can sometimes find some out in the wild. And if you do manage to get a follower that's got the hunting skill, they can also get more out of each piece of meat that they hunt. The padded lining will give you more opportunity to stay out in the cold, especially if a blizzard starts to hit or the temperatures just dip. Just don't forget to equip the pieces that you make. The game doesn't do it automatically. You still have to pop them into your slots. Keeping you warm isn't the only armor you need. You're gonna need something to actually stop the monsters hurting you a little bit. Early on, you're gonna get scrap metal. Use this salvage to make yourself some scrap metal armor. You need six pieces and you'll also need six pieces of fiber. Now you may be wondering, that's a lot of fiber you need. So that's a lot of the grub worms you're gonna to need to find. I suggest you head right outside of the main early camp and go into the woods that way. All around the deep woods, once you get past the lake, you'll find lots and lots of grubs. 
Always make sure you've got at least one torch as well. It can help protect you from the cold. When things start to get really icy, you'll notice the edges of the screen are starting to frost over. You haven't got much time. You will need to put a fire down or find a camp spot. But a torch can help very, very lightly keep the cold from killing you. Also make sure you're paying attention to the map. Definitely put one of the markers for a hotspot base around you so you know where to go in case a storm does come in. It's better doing this than trying to craft a fire up or a makeshift shelter. Makeshift shelters cost a ton of resources so it's always better to know exactly where your nearest camp spot is so you can hide there instead. Now the temperature may rise while you're in certain structures but that doesn't mean it's not going to kill you. Your best bet is to rest at a proper fire and fast forward some time until the bar goes down. Your frostbite and your food gauges are in the top right corner. You'll also find a temperature measurement. Pay attention to these. If they're getting completely white you are close to either running out of food or you're going to get frostbite completely. Just be aware that when you're resting you don't want to go past the white line into the red. That means you'll actually start taking damage because you haven't got enough food or enough firewood. As you progress you are going to unlock better materials to craft with but in the early stages this is what you should be making first. Pouches, underlay or padding, then the chainmail, then think about also getting yourself a knife and maybe a pickaxe. The game pretty much teaches you how to make an axe in the very early stages, so you should have one of them already. The sword or knife, I don't think it's that important straight on. It does give you a tiny little bit more attack power, but not as much as you would think. It needs a hell of a lot of fibre as well as salvage, so I really do think that's the last thing you should be making. The bow, of course, is absolutely crucial if you're going to be getting the pristine meats, so make sure you get the bow very early on as well. Very early on in the game, I was taking a look at construction and I think I didn't really need to that much. When you build up followers, they're gonna need places to live and that's what the huts do. So for every single follower you have, you need to build at least one hut and it will stop them eating too much food or eating too much of the wood. It's really super annoying that every time you set one of your followers to do something like build a hut, they'll go off and do their own thing because they're tired or they're injured or they're hungry. Your best bet is to keep a track on what they're actually doing or what you want built and get most of the resources yourself and make sure you're putting them in to your camp's inventory system so they can go ahead and carry on using it. Don't leave any pristine meats in there or the grubs. They will start using them for food sources when you need it to make fiber and other stuff. So always keep that on you. When you die, don't worry too much about your possessions. You don't lose anything, it's still all on you. It's only if you lose all your flames of hope that you have to start all over again. Take a look at the map and you'll see all these tiny little white dots. These signify an investigative spot. They're basically these red horrible orbs. Each time you go in there, the horrible monster comes out and utters some horrible words and you can go and hopefully get some resources from it. Generally though, what you will get is Eldritch Crystals. These are really super important when crafting healing items. All the herbs that you've been gathering alongside the grub room, this is what you're going to be using to make potions and healing balms or salves. On the map, you'll find the cleansing spots that you need to go and cleanse as well. By smashing away at the A button or the X button, depending on what you're using, you will cleanse this. Now, sometimes there are creatures that will attack you. Use the dodge button to get away and then keep on cleansing. Once you've cleansed, they will leave you alone. It's going to drop lots of Eldritch Essences. This is crucial for the healing, but you'll also gain access to shards. These can also be gained from elsewhere in the game. These are going to help you over the long term. You can check what ones you've got by going to your boons and blessings in the menu and you'll see what you've got. There's four types that are going to give you bonuses to your health, your food, your stamina and keeping away from the cold. I do believe these stay with you even when you've lost all your flames of hope and you have to start all over again. You keep all of these shards to give you a little bit of extra help next time you do a playthrough. Now I did mention the construction and building up your settlement. Very early game, don't pay too much attention to this. There isn't that many followers that you can find to help you and the map is quite huge and big. You're going to be unlocking lots of different things. What you probably need to though when you start thinking about this is get materials to craft a hut and a bobsled. If you're wondering how to get the wolves, once you've cleansed enough spots on the map, one of them will spit out a wolf for you. This will automatically go back to your base and it will unlock once you've built the bobsled shed. The bobsled just allows you to get across the big massive map a lot quicker and easier, so it's absolutely crucial that you build this early game so that you can get around much better. You'll generally need a lot of pristine wood as well, so make sure that you're balancing that out and you're not crafting lots of firewood from the pristine wood, as pristine wood is very valuable. 
Next up, I'm going to tell you how to do the co-op. Obviously, co-op's an important feature of the game. After you've completed the very first beginning mission part of the game and you've unlocked your first follower, you can then invite anyone on your friends list to come and join your world. Pull up the start menu and then go to edit expeditions. You can see clearly it says press the Y button or triangle button to start co-op and you can basically invite any of your friends that have the game. It is limited to only one person, you can only have two people, so I, you and your friend play at the same time, and no progress from them really carries over. They are literally replacing one of your followers as you go out on expeditions or adventures, but at least they can go and gather independently and do stuff that they want to do to help build up your settlement. When it comes to your followers, you are going to unlock more. You can do these by completing events. As you progress, you are going to have to make some decisions about which followers you keep and sometimes which followers you're going to set out into the harsh winter. Pay attention to their special abilities or their proficiencies. Make sure you're using the ones that are going to give you what you need here and then. They do consume food and they are going to eat up all of your wood. So make sure you are making them work for it and assigning them to tasks. Combat in Fate of Science is much more deliberate. You are going to have to think about how to take on enemies. And if more than two enemies approach you, you may have real trouble. It's definitely a case of being patient and knowing when to attack. Your stamina runs out really quickly and it can be a bit hard to get in away. Make sure you've clicked the run button. This disables the focus and means that you'll hopefully be able to get out of the way of any hits or parry at the right time. If you parry just at the right moment, you will be able to deliver a blow to them that does more damage. But nevertheless, it can be pretty tough early game until you get used to the way that the enemies move. So usually only hit once or twice, back away, and then get your stamina back up before going in again. Where possible, soften up the enemy with arrows. You can do a fair amount of damage with some of them, and enemies like the Spitter can be taken out with just three arrows. When you've got all the items that you can get to upgrade yourself like the armors and the sword, you're going to start thinking about going for one of the outposts. Cleansing an outpost reveals all of the resources in the area and it pretty much progresses the next part of the game. So make sure you go and clear these out once you're at a certain level. Also make sure you've got full health and your temperature ice bar is different or it's gone away completely. You really will need every aspect. And probably the biggest tip of all is avoid the falling cars. Each time you look at the map, make sure you look at where that giant behemoth is that is dropping cars. It does give you a location. If you start seeing the red lights, obviously you're going to need to be moving out there. But the amount of times I've gone to cleanse a nest and I've been killed by a falling car is more than you would think. And that is pretty much it for this tips video for Fate of Silence. I'm really enjoying this game. It's really unique. I think it's got some special properties. If you are enjoying it or my videos, make sure you click like on that button. Also come and join my Discord. I've set up a Fate of Silence chat if you want to exchange tips or need help or just find someone to play with, you may be able to do that too. I am JPG. I will see you at Bags for another Fate of Silence tips video very soon. Also go and check out my Let's Plays. Until then, laters.